Thank you. Thank you. Babies due April 10th, as you guys are, are watching Casey progress in pregnancy. A couple weeks ago, I gave the church permission to, to realize that she was pregnant, which is a, a big no-no that you don't want to uh, make an assumption of, and it'd be wrong. Um, so a couple things before we get started here. Something that I realized when I was preparing for this message today is that Casey and I have been your lead pastors for a year now. January 4th was our one-year anniversary with you guys, and I just want to thank you. I, I, I kind of feel like I celebrate you guys for putting up with Casey and I for the last year, uh, but we're excited. We're excited for the, to, to be closing down one chapter and then to be kind of like stepping into another chapter. But as Casey was saying, this, this message, words... Words to live by. This is something that we have a personal connection to. This is a, a message, it's a discipline actually, that as Casey said, it, it did. It changed our lives. In fact, it kind, of, it kind of saved our lives. It saved my life. And this is a, a discipline that if we learn to do it, it will change your life and it will make your life better. It will make your life different. In fact, I believe in this so much. I so believe in this with all conviction and all that's in my heart, that I'm going to make a guarantee for you guys. Now, I, I, and, and you can take this to the bank, but here's my guarantee to you. My guarantee is that this year could be your best year ever, even if your circumstances don't change. Now, that's a bold guarantee to make, especially with the kind of year that we've come through and the kind of actually two years that we've come through. Um, but I, I feel confident enough to make this, that... This year, this year, 2022, can be your best year. Even if life doesn't change or life doesn't get better or, or whatever, my guarantee is that this can be your best year. Now, this whole thing, this guarantee actually starts with your thoughts. It starts with the way that you think. Now, this is something that, that we highly underestimate. We, we don't understand the value and the importance that, that we put on what happens in here. See, there's so much about what we think that, that impacts everything, that impacts what we do and how we see ourselves, but today we're going to unpack that even more. We started to unpack it last week, and I believe in it so much that I wanted to continue talking about it today, but so much of, of the guarantee that I give you starts with your thoughts. Now, I thought that we would start with a little bit of fun, and so I've got a string of thoughts about 2021 that I put together, because we can, you know, January is a special time of year, it's when we start to make resolutions, it's when we say, okay, this is the year I'm going to lose weight, or I'm going to fix this relationship, or I'm going to, you know, whatever it is, but we make resolutions, or, and some of us even, we're done making resolutions, because we know that we won't keep them, but I, I thought, with, with all the excitement of starting a new year, let's look back on 2021, so I've got a, a pictograph for us here, and and again, I hope that we can have a little bit of fun with this. So 2021 started out with chocolate ice cream, okay? So 2021, and, and, and if you put these two together, you know, you can kind of see the chocolate ice cream. So 2021, we thought it's going to be better. It's going to be different. 20, we're done with COVID. We're coming out of lockdown. 2020 was really hard. And then we found out, you know, boom, we were going right back into another lockdown. And, and all of us just kind of screamed chocolate ice cream. And then it goes from that to kind of having your mind blown. I remember driving across the bridge, leaving Pinelands one day, and just knowing that we were, we were having another lockdown. And I just thought, like, my mind just fizzed. I thought, I don't know what to do. I don't know what else to do, and I know many of us have thought about our businesses and, and our families that way. Like, like it just kept coming, and it just kind of blew our minds. And and then this green person here represents, you know, everyone just getting sick and everyone getting COVID. And and we're we're never going to leave the mask life. We're always going to have, you know, probably have masks in our lives for a long time. And especially last year, we've gotten trendy with our masks. Some of us have really mastered the way to breathe through them and that sort of thing. Now, this one is a zombie. Now, the reason that I have a zombie up there representing 2021 is because we kind of treated each other like we would a, a zombie apocalypse. If you, wanted, if you wanted to go spend time with somebody, before they came into your house, it would be, okay, do you have COVID? We need to check and make sure that you're not sick. It's like, 
making sure that the infection doesn't break your exterior wall. It, it makes me think about defending a, a zombie apocalypse. But then this face palm here, for me, it brings up this memory of so many of you out there went two years without getting sick, and then you let your guard down for just a moment. And when you did, you, you ended up, you know, catching COVID. And it was kind of like, oh, you know, we, we, we invited that extra person over, and then the whole family got sick. Over Christmas time, quick story, Casey and the boys went up to spend some time with a family here in the church in, uh, I think it was Betty's Bay, and I had Casey take a COVID test before she went because I knew if, if, if someone up there got sick, no one was going to point at my wife and say that she was the zombie that brought in the sickness into the, the inner walls. So, and, and then these, these last three uh, emojis kind of represent just like kind of what's been on the forefront of our mind, you know, over the last really like two years. You know, so th- this is the kind of stuff that we've been thinking about. This is the kind of stuff that has weighed heavy on our, on our thoughts and our hearts in 2021. Now, how, how are we hoping to think about the year 2022? So I've got two pictures for that, and, and it's this. I'm leaning on a hope and a prayer, and I'm hoping that just like this graph shows, that things are going to trend upward and to the right. I'm hoping that things are going to get better, that the business is going to get better, that family's going to get better, that, that even more people will feel safe coming to church or more people will feel safe kind of getting out of their house. But the point is, is, that, is that I'm really banking on the fact that 2022 is going to trend and it's going to get better. But I have to consider the reality of, well, maybe it doesn't get better. Maybe 2022 stays the same. Maybe it it doesn't go up and to the right. You know, we, we don't know. I can't guarantee what 2022 is going to do. But the way that I'm thinking about 2022 is I'm hoping that it's going to be better. So as we step into this new year, there's something that, that as we talk about our thoughts, as we talk about the way we think, there's something that we have to wrestle with. The thing that, that we wrestle the most with, more than you know, is this thing called your inner dialogue. So I'll give you two examples of an inner dialogue. Um, the first example would be when I was a kid, I was in probably fifth or sixth grade, and, and I was at a, a camp, like a summer camp. And for some reason, now you have to get the visual. When I was a kid and I was, you know, fifth or sixth grade, I was probably this tall and like this wide and had no coordination. Somebody laughed at me. I heard that over the night. I was tall, I was short, I was wide, I had no coordination. And, and for some reason, I felt like that I could take a repelling course, which, which a repelling course is they would put a harness on you and take you somewhere high and teach you how to get, to get down. And I thought, hey, sure, you know, I'll defy the odds of gravity. I'm like this and this, and I'm not confident in myself. I'll take that course. And there was a, a day where we went up onto this thing. You, you, you went up on this big ladder, and you're strapped into cables, and you walk out on this big ledge, and you've got two cables attached to you, and it's a big swing. So they're telling you, okay, you just step off, and then you do this big, huge swing. Now, they were telling me, step and go, but my inner dialogue was saying, no, you'll die. And, and, I, and for like 30 minutes, the camp counselors, now, I felt like I was 300 meters in the air. I think looking back on it, I was probably like 10. But, but the camp counselors were telling me, come down, come down, you got to step off. And I, my inner dialogue wouldn't let me do it because it just kept saying, no, Chris, you'll die. And what ended up happening is they had to come up and get me and then lower me down. It was very, it was very bad. Another example of an inner dialogue that I've dealt with is I remember New Year's Eve one year, I was meeting some friends out for dinner, and this was when we lived in the States. And a friend of mine, who's a, a doctor, a very successful doctor, um, he brought some friends, and we're standing in a circle, and I was a construction worker. And as, I, as we all stood around, we were kind of getting to know each other, and it was, hi, my name's Daryl, I'm a doctor, I work in radiology, and another guy was like, hey, I'm so-and-so, I'm a doctor, I work in this, and another doctor, and another doctor, and I was like, hey, I'm Chris, I work, I'm a construction worker who's the same age as you guys who were doctors. <laughs> So what have I done with my life? And I, I took a big swallow and said, no. So my, but what was happening is, so no disrespect to anyone's profession, but what was happening in my inner dialogue was I was having a battle there because my inner dialogue was telling me something and it was actually steering me in a direction. And in fact, there's this truth that we know that life will always move 
in the direction of your strongest thoughts. So that, that's how important your inner dialogue is, is that life will always move in the direction of your strongest thoughts. The things that you think, the, 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 the things that you let your brain entertain will always move, will always move you, will always steer you. It, it, it's so important the way you think. Your inner dialogue is so important because it, it impacts everything. And so I want to give you two extremes. In these two extremes, I hope that we can find ourselves somewhere in the middle. And, and this whole message, I'm building this case for you guys. I want, to, I want to really highlight and show you guys how important it is that you think. And then at the end, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you uh, a way to do this life-changing discipline. And, and it's going to change your life. But before we get there, do you know anybody that wakes up in the morning that looks like this picture here? That, that looks like... You're walking, you know, they get out of bed and they just say, like, I'm walking on sunshine. Like, I feel good. God loves me. My family loves me. I'm a capable human. I can go and I can do my job today. I'm happy. People are, are good in my life. I'm a, I'm a great father. Like, the Lord loves me. I'm confident in who I am. I have no issues. And I am ready to go. You know, I, not many of us are, are that way. But there are a few people that are that way. But then there's, there's the other extreme, and we don't typically like to be uh, around people that are that way. But then the other extreme is this. I'm not a morning person. I don't like mornings or people. And, and those are people that they wake up in the morning, and like the kids are tugging on the covers, and you're like, why do we even have kids? And I know in our house, the baby monitor, you know, goes off, and, and Benjamin starts to, to kind of wake up and cry, and he goes, I want my mommy. <laughs> and, and it's 4.30, and it's like, why are we doing this? Why are we doing this again, you know? And, and, you, and, then, and then Monday morning rolls around, and you're like, oh, I've got to go to work, and work is hard, and, man, the break wasn't long enough, and I'm so exhausted, and I'm ready for next December when I can take another break. And you kind of just, you have people that are like this, this Eeyore, this sort of like ho-hum kind of personality, or this ho-hum kind of person. Now, that's, that's two extremes, and somewhere in the middle of that, we, we find ourselves. We find ourselves in a place where, okay, how do you think about your day? How do you feel when you wake up? How do you feel when you go throughout your day? Which side do you lean on? Do you lean towards sunshine, or do you lean towards, uh, you know, hating everybody and everything, and life is just something that you're trying to get through and that you're trying to deal with? Now, that's something to just consider, and Wherever it is that you're headed, whichever side you find yourself on, just know that it's your thoughts largely that put you there. And so I'm going to give you a statement, and then I'm going to ask you a question. And, and this, this is going to help kind of, I, I want to awaken your thinking. I want you to bring attention to the way that you think about yourself. See, th this, this discipline that I'm going to teach you, this is interactive. I need you to zone in. I need, you to, t I need to take you on a process of thinking about the way that you think. And so here's a statement and here's a question for you. Statement, we just said this. Life is moving in the direction of your strongest thoughts. Question, are you excited about the direction that your thoughts are taking you? Now, that's a heavy question. And it's a question that maybe a lot of us haven't even asked ourselves. Am I excited about the direction that I see my life going? Am I excited about Mondays? Am I excited about the, the, when I look into where my life is headed, am I happy with that? Now, for me, there was a moment in my life where I would say, no, I, I woke up and said, you know what, I'm absolutely not excited about the direction that my thoughts were taking me. Because if you entertain the wrong thoughts, if, if you let those kind of toxic thoughts or that inner voice get too loud in the wrong way, like, like I had done, then your world starts to get smaller and smaller and smaller. It starts to shrink down more and more. But I want you to, wrap, I want you to think about it. You know, I, I, I woke up one day and I said, I don't want to be the person that I know that I'm becoming. And it wasn't because I was a bad person. It wasn't because I had this incredible sin in my life. It was just, I, I just wanted to be happier. I just wanted to have more joy. I mean, do you find yourself struggling to find peace? Do you find yourself struggling to just like, be happy? Do you find yourself struggling to find joy in your day? 
Do you find yourself living more in fear, living more in, in guilt, living more in shame? Where do, you, where do you see yourself? And are you happy with where you are, and are you happy with where you're going? Now, that, that's something for you to really absorb and for you to ask yourself. Now, for those of you that are, are Jesus followers, I've got good news for you. And for those of you that don't know Jesus at all, that's okay, but I want you to know that if you know Jesus, there's some really, really good news when it comes to this, and it's this, that we, need, we actually need God to do this change in us. We need God to change our thinking. It's, it's actually not up to us. It, it's, not, it's not up to us. to See, the nice thing is, is it takes the responsibility off of you. Now, this was something that I really struggled with. As I wanted to change the way that I was thinking, as I wanted to change the direction that my life was going in, I often found myself feeling overwhelmed, like, there's no way I can change this. There's no way I can change the way I interpret situations. There's no way I can change so that when I walk into my friend group, I'm no longer saying they don't want me here, or they don't like me, or I'm not enough, or I'm not worth it, or, you know, there's, it's too much for me to change. The, these thoughts, they get so ingrained in us. They get so deeply, they become a part of, of who we are. But this truth here, that we need God to do it, it's not up to us. I mean, that, this is such a gift and such a blessing. And I'm going to show you this in Scripture. In Romans 12, 2, it says this. It says, this is Paul talking to the church in Romans. And he's, he's, he's giving them advice. And he says, hey guys, don't copy the behavior and customs of this world. He's saying, don't think like the world thinks. Don't feel shame like the world tells you you should. Don't, don't feel the things that, that the world is saying you should. Don't feel inadequate because you don't have money or clothes or the right car. Don't feel inferior or less than because you don't have a certain job. Don't feel those things. Don't, don't be conformed to the behaviors and customs in the world. He says, but instead, let God transform you into a new person by changing the way that you think. See, the promise here that God gives us is that if we change the way we think, if, if we let God change the way we think, it changes us. It transforms us. So I don't know who in here needs transformation in 2022. I know that I, know that I did. I, I, know that, I know that there's many years. There's months. There's, I mean, last Monday, I needed transformation. It, it happens all year long. But every time that comes up, I get to lean on this truth that God will transform me. All I have to do is align myself with God. Now, I've got a couple statements for you that are just perspective-shaping statements, okay? The first one I'll put up here is, is this for you. It's, life isn't about what happens to you, but rather how you think about what happens to you. Now, I'll illustrate this point to you like this. Your worst day, okay, think about your worst day. Think about the last couple of weeks or the last couple of months, maybe what your worst day was. Your worst day is somebody else's best day. Now, that is, that's a huge perspective shift. Your worst day is probably better than somebody else's best day. Now, a couple years ago, Letha and I, we were driving home from, from rugby practice, and he practiced uh, at Hamilton's and Seapoint. And so, you know, you come home, and you're coming home at 6.30, 7 o'clock at night, driving into Pinelands, there's tons of traffic, you're sitting in traffic, and then one day as we were driving down the road, I noticed a guy on the side of the road, and he had his, his hood up, and I thought, like, oh man, it's getting dark, uh, there is so much traffic, this dude is broken down, like, I just, I don't know what it was, because normally I just sit in traffic and just feel frustrated with the situation, because I like to be in control, and I'm not in control because there's cars in front of me, and I can't go as fast as I want to go, and so I just sit there, and I get frustrated, but in this day, on this moment, I looked over at this guy, and I thought, I'm just thankful that I'm not broken down, that I'm cruising down the road, even though we're inching down the road, I'm, I'm at least not him. I'm at least not broken down. And Leaf and I started to play this game that we call the abundance game. And I've spoken about it before, but it would go something like this. It, it, it's, a, it's, it's changing the way that you think about what happens rather than, than hoping that something different happens. So I would say something like this. Like this morning, okay? When I woke up this morning, my life is so abundant that I had a fan that I could turn off. Okay, now yesterday was a hot day and last night was a hot night and there's a lot of people in the world that don't have electricity or don't have a fan. 
My life is so abundant that when I got up this morning, I could choose between which shirt that I wanted to put on. My, my life is so abundant that Casey and I could come to church in two separate vehicles. We have two working cars. My, my life is so abundant that, you know, think about it's, it could go on and on and on. And that's the fun thing about this game is it starts to make you think about the perspective that you look at your life. It starts to kind of open up your mind to that. Now, another saying that I have here is, is this. It talks about stress. So think about this. Stress is not about how much you have to do, but rather how you think about what it is that you have to do. So stress is not about how much you have to do, but whether you think about how much you have to do. And I, I read this book, actually, Casey and I, when we got married, we went to Lesotho on our honeymoon, and it was a complete miracle that, that we got to go. It was one of these situations where we're like two weeks before the wedding, and Casey is going, hey, have you got the honeymoon sorted? You got the honeymoon? And I'm like, yeah, it's sorted. It's totally sorted. And then I sat in my office, and I'm Googling, you know, honeymoon, you know, South Africa. We lived in in Nelsford at the time, and I thought, I do not have a honeymoon sorted. And I called this lodge called Maliba Lodge in Lesotho. It's this beautiful five-star uh, resort uh, tucked up in the mountains. It was wonderful. It was everything that, that we could ever imagine. And, and I called and I said, you know, hey, I'd like to book for, you know, this much time. And, and they gave me the price and it was something, I mean, it was crazy. It was something like 40 or 45,000 rand for, for 10 days. And I, I just laughed and I said, I'm so sorry. I've completely wasted your time. And they said, no, 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 that's okay. Well, what, what would you like to pay? <laughs> and so I, I, we had a budget. We had, we had our parents had given us 7,000 rand. I said, well, we have 7,000 rand. And they said, okay, cool, we'll, take, we'll, we'll book you. And I thought, well, that's absolutely amazing. And so, we, yeah, we, we had this amazing honeymoon. But on this honeymoon, I read a book called Leadership Pain. Now, I wasn't preparing for marriage by le- reading this book, Leadership Pain, but I was trying to learn about leadership. And there's this, this principle in leadership that y- your capacity to lead is directly related to your capacity for pain. So your capacity to lead is directly related to your capacity to manage stress. So as a pastor, in the last year I've been learning how to lead a church of, of 200, 250 people with a couple staff. Now, if I can't lead 200, there's no way that I can lead 10,000. So we have to learn along the way how to manage our stress, how to manage our tensions, how to rethink about the way, you know, if you think about how hard your day is or how many meetings you have or how much stress you have on your plate, you know, there, there's always somebody else that has more, more meetings and more on their plate and more to do. And it, it's, it'll never get easier or slow down, but what can happen is we can change the way that we think about it. So I hope you're starting to wrap your head around this idea that what you think matters. The way you think matters. Now, there's one thing that stands in the way of this, that stands in the way of us experiencing freedom. There's one thing that that really makes it difficult for us to let God renew our minds, and it's this thing called strongholds. And I'm going to ask you this question of, what are your strongholds? What are the things that, that are in your life that that you just can't break, you just can't beat, and you can't overcome. Okay, so a stronghold would be a thought, it's the first thought that you go to. So, for example, in the morning when you get up and you get dressed, and you look in a mirror, what's the first thought that comes to your mind when you look into that mirror? Well, for so many of us, it's not a positive thought. It's a, oh, you know, I'm fat, or I'm too skinny, or I'm, look at this, or, you know, like, you're, there's an unhappiness there. And no matter what you do, no matter how much you work out, or no matter how much you, you exercise, or how much you diet, you just can't get your body to a place where you look in the mirror and you say, I like that, I'm happy with that. Well, you know what, that's a stronghold in your life. If, if you find yourself, you know, asking like, I don't know why, but I just keep losing friends left and right. I keep, every time a friend comes in, and they start to get close to me, I find that, you know, I can't believe that they like me for me, and I start to, I start to push them away. There's a stronghold there in your life. There's, there's something in you that is holding you prisoner. 
There's a thought in you that's holding you captive. It's a strong hold on you. It's the first thing that you think. It's the first thing that you think about. Now, th- this is where I, wanna, I, wanna, I want us to hone in here. This is where it gets really important. This is where life change begins to happen. And, it, and it's this. I don't know what you believe about yourself. I don't know how much you believe in yourself. I don't know how you think about yourself. I'm not in your shoes. I don't wake up as you. Only you know what you think about yourself. Only you know what, what, what thoughts you carry around. But I want you to think about, get vulnerable right now a little. You don't have to get vulnerable out loud, or actually, please don't. But get vulnerable a little bit and say, okay, what do I think about myself? See, when I started going through therapy, my therapist said, she, she gave me this, this task to do. I had to establish my core values. Now, I thought my core values would be something fun, you know, like courage and honor and strength or, or whatever. But as I started working and working and working and working on this, and she kept telling me, no, that's wrong, that's wrong, that's wrong, keep working, keep working, keep working. I established that my core values were fear, guilt, and shame. Now, those core values, fear, guilt, and shame, were three strongholds. Those are, those are the three strongholds that drove most of my thinking, So as I thought about things, I filtered them through the strongholds of fear, guilt, and shame. So what what are your strongholds? What are the things that you filter your thoughts through? What what is it that, that, yeah, I, I hope that you guys, I hope things start to come to mind. And just in case things don't come to mind, I've got a whole list here that I'm going to put on the screen for you. And I want you to look through this. Is anxiety a stronghold for you? Is this something that, that you, you carry around throughout the day and it determines the way that you think? It determines the way that, that you feel about yourself? Is it worry? Is it lacking confidence? Is it feeling inadequate? How many of us judge half of what we do because we feel inadequate? How many of our decisions do we not make because we feel inadequate? What about guilt or shame or fear or this idea of I'm not good enough, I just don't have enough value to add, or, or I don't have what it takes, or I will never be loved, or trauma, or stress, or body dysmorphia, or what is it? What is the stronghold that's in your life? Bring that to the surface, because we're going to deal with that here in a minute. But I want you to start to bring that to the surface of your thinking. And I'll tell you, this is, I'm going to give you a verse here that Paul says about strongholds. And I hope you take comfort in this. And he says this in 2 Corinthians 10. We are human, but we don't wage war as humans do. We use God's mighty weapons, not worldly weapons, to knock down the strongholds. Now, this should be comforting to all of us. Because the reason that this is so comforting is that God is saying that your biggest battle is a battle in your thinking. It's not a battle of swords and guns and tanks and missiles and things like that. Your biggest battle is in what's happening right here. And what God is saying is that I've got mightier weapons to deal with that. You're not going to conquer your thinking with with a sword or or with some kind of physical battle. You're going to conquer your thinking. You're going to change the way that you are because God has a mighty weapon that He wants to give you. He wants to equip you with. He wants you to start believing other things about yourself than what you believe about yourself. So he says, hey, I'm going to give you other weapons to knock down the strongholds of human reasoning and destroy false arguments because the things that you think about yourself are false. Receive that. What you think about yourself is false. The stronghold that you have over your life, it's false. It's not true. The thing that you filter your thoughts through, it's wrong. It's a lie. It's false. It's not true. And now that we know that it's not true, and we know that God is for us, and God gives us this toolkit of of weapons that we can actually take our thoughts, and we can take our strongholds, and we can break them down. Okay, so how do we claim victory back? Now, this is where it really starts to be good. How do we claim victory? And We've got another verse here. You guys can go to the verse and it, one, one more for us here. So in 2 Corinthians 10, Paul goes on to say this. He goes on to say, we capture, okay, this is how we claim victory against our thoughts. We capture the rebellious thoughts. 
We take those thoughts and we teach them to obey Christ. We capture our rebellious thoughts and we take them and we teach them to obey Christ. Now, what that means is I capture my thought of anxiety. I capture my thought of not feeling just valued and my my poor self-worth. I capture it and I take it to Jesus. And Jesus says, that's a lie. That doesn't belong in you and it doesn't belong in, in the way that you think. We take those thoughts captive, those things that hold us into a prison, those strongholds that we have, and we bring it to Jesus. And Jesus takes care of it, and he abolishes it. And he'll do it over and over and over again for you. And if you don't know Jesus, then I just want you to know that you're one step away from stepping into these amazing promises that God has for you. He'll completely change your life. And so I want to ask you this question. What negative thoughts are dominating your thinking. See, the the most effective place for Satan to win is in the battlefield of your mind. The most effective place where Satan can can win is in the battlefield of your mind. So we have to protect that. But God is for us, and God will actually do the work for us. Now, the second question that I want to ask you is... What spiritual truths could abolish those strongholds? What are the spiritual truths that we know that can actually abolish these strongholds? Now, this is where we get into this, the discipline that we keep talking about. And this discipline is called words to live by. Now, what words to live by is, is it starts with you giving God the first of your day. So maybe that's the first minute the first cup of coffee, maybe it's the first, um, the, maybe it's just the first eye open that you have before you get out of bed and before life and the kids get going. But you just give God the first minute, the first minute, the first hour, the first coffee, the first car ride, whatever it is, you're going to give God the very first part of your day. Now, this is important because it's going to shape your day. It's going to impact your day, but you're going to give God the first thing. Now, what you're going to do when you do that, is you're going to come up with something that's so simple and yet so powerful. This right here saved my life. This right here, it's paper. It changed my life. It changed our family. And what happened is, is I was not happy with where my life was going based on my thinking. So I wrote out, words to live by. I thought about where I was going and what strongholds were in my life, and I counteracted those strongholds. And we wrote out instead words that I'm going to live by. So for example, if you struggle with self-worth, instead of saying, I feel, I feel so worthless, you know what you're going to do? You're going to wake up in the morning and you're going to say, I'm a masterpiece. You're going to say, I'm strengthened by God who upholds me, he protects me, and he defends me. I am fierce in confidence and boldness because God is with me. I am named by God. I am not labeled by man. How much different would your day be if you said that in the morning, if you spoke that over your life? What about this? Through Christ, I am strong, gentle, fierce, and compassionate. I wake up with purpose, direction, and meaning every day of my life. So you wake up in the morning and you speak these things over yourself. And how much better is that than going all day long and letting the strongholds in your life just conquer your thinking? And so you say it day in, day out, every single day. If you miss a day, you start it again. You say it again. What about my business people out there? I develop leaders. That's not something I do. It's who I am. What about those of you that are struggling with lust or porn or addiction? I fight for purity, guarding my eyes and heart from tempting situations. I am a warrior. I stand firm even when the pain is crippling because God is my strength. I am disciplined. Christ in me is stronger than the wrong desires in me. This will change you. These are, these are words that you live by. You don't live by as a parent. You don't live by the words of, I'm a bad parent. I can't parent my kids. My kids are crazy. Life is just coming undone and unraveled. Those are the words that you may currently be living by, but I'm gonna give you new words that you can live by. God has given me everything that I need to teach my kids about Him. You may not believe that, but if you say it, it'll come true in your life. 
In our house, we forgive. In our house, we give grace. In our house, we always love. Is that the climate and the temperature of your house? Well, if you say it, it'll become that. My children will love God and serve Him with their whole hearts. I will nurture, equip, train, and empower them to do more for His kingdom than they can ever imagine. Come on, parents. You don't have to live in the trap, the thinking trap that you've been in. You get to write out new words to live by. Shame. Even when others remind me of my past, I will not let it limit my future. I am not defined by what I have done. Somebody out there that has a stronghold of shame, you can let that go because that's not who you are. You're not defined by what you've done. Rejection. I'm not, re- I'm not a rejected soul because God continually pursues me. Guys, do you see how, how something like this can completely, utterly change your life? And so the discipline of words to live by is sitting down and looking at your strongholds, identifying your values, your core values, which are probably not what you want them to be. It may be fear, guilt, shame, anxiety, whatever it is. But you identify those and you say, I'm tired of going in the direction of that. And you start speaking something different over your life. Parents, you, you start saying, man, I, I'm stressed about my family. I'm stressed about my, my kids and the direction that they're going. I'm a failure as a parent. I've let my family down. Look at the problems that are in my kids. That's my fault. You know what? That's a prison that you no longer have to live under. Let it go. Let your past go. Let your shame go. Let your guilt go. And you do it every day. You let it go. And then you, you're going to write out 10 or so statements. And we're actually going to give you uh, a, a resource that, that's going to go out into your email. And it's, it's three steps on how to do this. And it'll take you, over the course of three days, just a couple hours. And when you come out of that, you're going to have your own set of words to live by. And we've even provided over 100 examples in different categories for you to choose from. But guys, this is the discipline that will change your life. It's the discipline that you can go to day in and day out, and it'll renew you over and over and over again. And this is my guarantee as to why 2022 can be the best year of your life, even if your circumstances don't change. Because if you let God change your thinking by declaring your words to live by over you, it will make your life a better life. It will give you the best year ever. And so I, I'm going to, the, the band can come on up and we're going to get ready to sing a song. And, and in this song, what, what I want is, I just want to, the purpose of this is just to pause and give you guys time to reflect. It, it's the whole reason that we do this is for you. Before you go out there and life gets busy again, I just want you to have a, a quiet moment, a moment of worship where you could just reflect, where you could just think about what it is that, that we've talked about today. And before I turn it over to the band, I, I just want to share one more thing with you. Casey and I, when we got married, you know, we, we, our, our life was crazy the way that it came about, but we were in South Africa alone, unable to travel, no family around. We moved to Cape Town. We were completely alone. We were just struggling. We were getting just completely chewed up and spit out by the city of Cape Town. And Casey and I sat down and said, you know what? We're going to write the words that our family is going to live by. And if you've ever come into our home, you'll see hanging up um, above one of our, our kitchen table, you'll see a big kind of picture And what it is, is it's words that we chose over our life that's printed there. And so we've said, not only do we have words to live by, but we've declared it over our family. I just want to read a couple to you. And I hope that it inspires you to feel the same for your family. Because this isn't isn't stuff that a pastor can do. This is just human stuff. Because this is truth for you. So as a family, we are are a family created by God. Our purpose is to love and glorify God. We are a praising family. We are thankful in all things all the time. We are a blessed family. God has chosen us and appointed us for a special purpose. We are a family that believes God's word. We are courageous and unshakable as a family. We are a family that believes God's promises. 
We relentlessly pursue their fulfillment. We desire to live faith-filled lives that require and honor God. We are a family that glorifies God with our thoughts, words, and actions. And we are a family that searches and calls out the best in each other. And we, we have a lot more of them, but that's just a few of them. But I, I hope that you feel inspired today. I hope that you feel like you can let go of some things. And I hope that you feel like, you know what? I can come up with some words to live by that can completely change my life and give me the best year that I've ever had, ever. So I'm gonna pray. and then the